you were going to come sit in the Papa Fun chair. That would have been awesome. It's going to get really hot up here. Yep. Are you ready for this? Yep. Ready? Ready? I'm ready. Good morning, Convo! Um, so I had a hard time waking up this morning, and that was good, but I don't think it was quite enough to wake me up, so let's try that again. Good morning, Convo! That, that was better. I think we still have some people asleep. Let's, uh, let's get woken up this morning, right? Let's everybody stand up and join us. know this song, right? I feel like you do. And I'm trading my sorrows, and I'm trading my shame, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm trading my sickness, and I'm trading the joy of the Lord. We're singing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I want to hear you. I'm trading my shame. That's better. I'm laying them down for the joy of the The joy of the Lord. Okay, sing it out. We're singing. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Amen. Not pressed, but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. Pressed down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure. The joy is going to be my Though sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. And I'm trading my sorrows, and I'm trading my shame, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm trading my sickness, and I'm trading my The joy of the Lord. We're singing, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Amen. We're singing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Are you awake yet? Maybe a little bit. Um, uh, so we we have a deep love for 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 older songs, but we thought we'd uh, fix this one up a little bit. We uh, hope you like it. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. You got it? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Sing it out loud as you can. And Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, 
tried and true with thanksgiving i'll be living sanctuary for you what'd you think okay time for our awesome music group. Woo-hoo! Yeah. So good morning, day two, convo, super exciting. So I'm back up here about YSF. So, just got some announcements. So we have made it up to $94 from last night, so that's awesome. And our first goal is 100 so we're almost there, you guys. We're almost to our first fun thing, which will be Riley and Tim wearing their clothes inside out. So if you want to see that, go buy some stuff from YSF. Just a reminder of the fun stuff we've got back there. We've got candy. We've got soda. We've got a bunch of fun things. 
something else that we've got back there are jars, if you saw those on the table, with pictures of the CCOIM team in, like, pairs. And what you do is you, there's pebbles, and whoever has the most pebbles in their jar by the end of the weekend will get cream pied in the face. So, yeah, yeah, I know. It's pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie. Uh, last year, it was me and Brianna. We got cupcaked in the face. It was interesting. Don't put any ingredient items. Or do. Don't. No. Or you could. <laughs> that, yeah. Less for me, more for them. <laughs> but those are 25 cents each, and that's just a really fun thing to also donate to YFF. Um, so there's these paintings here. Um, I did them. <laughs> and they will be, so they each represent the theme for each rally this week's questions. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and so they will be silent auctioned off um, during the dance. So there will be a table set up during the dance, and uh, you can do a silent auction for those, which I think is really cool. <laughs> um, what else? I think that's it. So thank you. So I hope Convo's been awesome for y'all already. I've had a fun time. Have you had a fun time? We're gonna, we're gonna get a little more low key. Get our hearts prepared to hear the speaker and what, uh, what God may have to say to us today. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, and all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. Now great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will sing how great, how great is our God. And age to age. You stand, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, and Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Now great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will sing how great, how great is our God. And then is our God, and how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will sing how great, how great is our God, one more time, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will sing how great, how great is our God. Amen.
Will you all please be in an attitude of prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning, for us all being able to gather here for Rally 2. Bless us the rest of this day and tomorrow as we go through listening to our pastor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture for this rally is from Psalm 73. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong, for they are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes inequity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice, with arrogance they threaten oppression. Their mouth lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is, this is what the wicked are like, always free from care. They go on amassing wealth. Sure in vain, I have kept my heart pure, and I have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted, and in every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply, till I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their final destiny. Surely you place them slippery around, slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you will despite them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit was embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards you will take me into glory. Whom, I have, whom, I, whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell you all your deeds. Wow, there's a plethora of microphones up here. Uh, if I put these on the ground, will it freak out the sound system? Okay. When you come back looking for a microphone, they're over there. I'm on TV again. Hey, good morning, friends. Convoians? I kind of like convicts. That was kind of good, too. But... Uh, Convoyance is, I, I think, the more politically correct one, right? Well, so uh, this morning, I want to talk a little bit. Let me back up just a bit. So I am typically kind of introverted. Uh, I, I'm not really an extrovert. I don't usually have a whole lot of friends. I typically have kind of a smaller group of friends. Uh, it's kind of unusual because I'm a pastor, so I have to talk in front of a lot of people, so people think that I'm really extroverted. But in my personal life, I'm pretty introverted. And so when I, I, I try to, to put myself in places where I intentionally, because it's difficult for me, meet new people. And so this is kind of one of those things where I hopefully will do that. If you see me like during dinner or something sitting by myself, please feel free to come over and say, hi, my name is whatever, and I just want to say hi, because I'd love to meet people, but I'm not really very good at it. So um, having said that, when, when you're an introvert and when you, you kind of are not great at making friends with lots of people and you try to find places to do that, one of the ways that you do that is you, you try to introduce yourself to others. And so what I'm hoping to do this week is to kind of tell you a little bit about myself and the journey that I've been on and the things that I've kind of discovered, not only as a pastor, but as just someone 
who has struggled and kind of walked through this journey of faith for a while. And hopefully, you all will find some connection in that, uh, in that story that, that I share with you, and we'll have some kind of a bond there, okay? So that's what my hope is, anyway, as I'm talking with you. Uh, I, yesterday, uh, Brianna mentioned that uh, I ride motorcycles. It is, it's something that I discovered. Actually, I, I didn't really discover it. In, when I was in college and I had no money, a friend of mine had a motorcycle and I couldn't afford gas for my car. And a motorcycle got really good gas mileage, so he let me borrow his motorcycle. And I got hooked when I was in college riding motorcycles because they, gas was cheap then and you could go a long ways on a motorcycle. I have since just, I, I love riding motorcycles. On occasion, I race motorcycles. In fact, there's a picture that I think of me. That, that, that was a, this motorcycle is named Penny because uh, she's copper colored, so we named her Penny, right? Uh, that's me at Spokane International Raceway. Uh, that motorcycle, I have seen 167 miles an hour on the speedometer on that motorcycle. Every now, so I race, now I'm not particularly good because I'm not particularly young anymore. Um, and there's no one around me, so that either means I was way ahead or I was really way behind, and it was probably because I was way behind, there's nobody around me. Every now and again, I crash. Uh, show the next picture. <laughs> so, that you guys, you know on your t-shirts that you buy, you have that logo? I was kind of hoping that would be the logo for the, but uh, that's my, that's my, uh, my left shoulder uh, from a crash at the track. Um, and so I, I say it's reinforced now, so when I crash again, it won't break again, right? Because I've got some metal in there. But every now and again, you crash, right? <clears throat> For me, as being a, a, you can take that off so I don't have to look at me without skin on up there. <clears throat> um, so for me, anyway, part of my, my life of faith revolves around the relationships that I have with other people. And some of those relationships that have been most important to me and some of the best discussions and some of the, the best heart-searching moments I've had have been outside the walls of the church, particularly with friends that I ride motorcycles with. Uh, I have a, a, a standing, when the weather is, is nicer, I have a standing ride every Sunday afternoon. Uh, we call it Riding with the Web. And we go out for a ride, and uh, I kind of post up on a web page that I'm a part of, and people can come and join me as we ride kind of south of Spokane. And we go for rides down through the Palouse Hills. There's a, another picture here I want. So that's me, waving. And uh, I'm going this direction, and you notice all the people who are on the ride are on the other side of the road. So that tells you something about how good of a leader I am at, at leading motorcycle rides. But whenever we go on these rides, one of the best things about going on the ride for me is when we stop to either get fuel or when we stop because we're just tired and we'll sit around a table and we'll just start talking. And most of the people who come on those rides know that I'm a pastor and so those conversations uh, are very interesting sometimes. One of the things that I notice too is that there are some stereotypes about motorcycle riders um, and some of them are true, some of them are not so true. But a lot of the people who come on the rides uh, with me uh, are smokers. And so they need to stop every now and again because they have to, to suck on their cancer sticks for a while before they, right, before they do that. And I, it's always funny because they always, when we stop for fuel and we're next to a 10,000-gallon tank of flammable liquid, when do they decide to light their cigarettes? Is why I've got a hose with flammable liquid coming out of it and they stand next to me talking and I'm saying, hey. And so then you know where they go? they always go over to where the propane tank is, and they say, okay, I'll move over here. And I'm thinking, what, what is that about? So if I can find a place where we won't both explode, we find a place to have conversations and talk. A few months ago, I was going on a, a ride, and there was a, a student who was a student at Central Washington, or excuse me, at Eastern Washington University, and he was a rel religious studies major. And he knew that I was a pastor, and so as we were sitting around uh, in the, the fog bank of all the smokers around us, and as we were sitting around the table talking, he knew that I was a pastor, and he said, so what church are you a pastor of? And I said, well, it's Manitoba United Methodist Church. It's in the South Hill in Spokane. And he said, oh, so what, what do you all believe? Which is kind of like throwing me a watermelon and saying, here, swallow this, right? And I said, well, that's... Uh, that's Kind of easy to say and kind of not so easy to say. I said, for us at Manitou, one of the things that we want to do is we want to 
to, to create Christians who make a difference in the world. And, and we believe that being part of this church is a way that God's Spirit works in us and helps transform our neighborhoods and helps make us not only uh, brings joy to us, but brings joy to the people that we're in contact with. And he said, oh, so you make Christians. And I thought, well, yeah. And so I, when I hear those kind of questions, typically when, and somebody, uh, especially when somebody puts it in the framework of religion, usually what they're asking is, so what are the rules that you are about? And so I asked him, so tell me what, tell me what is your image of a Christian? And so he started to tell me the, the rules that, that he thought a Christian should follow. And they were kind of a, a list of behaviors, kind of things that you could, could check off, which I, I'm not necessarily uh, disagree with, but for him, the idea of, of being a person of faith meant that you either acted a certain way or behaved a certain way or could check off your list. And so he had his list of, of the things that were important to him as a Christian. And as I talked with him a little bit more, I, I tried to convey this idea that for us, being a, a person of faith was not just about a list that we have, because lists just kind of lead us to a place of disappointment sometimes. But having a relationship with a God who loves us, who can transform us, who can show us what joy is about, who can show us a better way of living, that can show us life in abundance, that's something that's worth living for. And so as we talked a little bit more, he began to say, well, so what do you do with, like, evil in the world? And what do you do with, with all those things if you don't just have a list that you subscribe to? And I have to admit that for me, there have been times in my life when I have felt like, what is the point of all this? I mean, especially when I get stuck on that list idea of saying, I'm doing all the right things on the list, but why is it that the people who are doing all the things that are not on the list, how come they're prospering? How come they're getting rich? How come it seems like everything seems to go right for them and it seems like such a struggle for me? Now, this morning we heard a passage of scripture read from the book of Psalms and it's written by a guy named Asaph. The, Psalms is an interesting book for me because Psalms is a series of songs and poems. And, and sometimes they're written by King David, sometimes they were written by some other people. But typically, most of the Psalms are songs, uh, songs or poems that talk about how great God is and are kind of songs of worship or poems proclaiming the goodness of God. But the psalm that we read this morning was not one of those psalms. It's written by a guy named Asaph. Asaph was, for lack of a better term, he was kind of the worship leader for the nation of Israel. He was the one, whenever there was a celebration and everybody was getting together and they were going to spend time proclaiming the goodness of God and they were going to spend time worshiping God, the person who led them was Asaph and his family. And so Asaph has some of these wonderful poems that are included in our book of Psalms. But this one is a little bit different because as you heard as he uh, begins to write this down, he says, how come the evildoers prosper? How come... I'm working so hard to do everything right, and yet it seems like the ones who are getting rich, the ones who are strong and healthy, the ones who are, are getting all the good things in life seem to break all the rules. What is the point? Now, I kind of like this psalm. Because I have to admit, there have been times when I felt the same way. In fact, it's good for me to know that literally, <laughs> the guy who wrote part of the Bible felt like Things weren't fair sometimes because I've been there as well and I find that sometimes in my own faith when I get lost in that list uh, of things that I do and I don't I forget about the relationship of a God that loves me and it's easy for me to get lost in that that woe is me because someone else is doing better than I am someone's making more money somebody's healthier or stronger or younger or can ride their motorcycle faster or doesn't have metal in their shoulder or, or any of those things but yet I'm following all the rules and it seems hard and you've ever been in that place where it feels like why why even try but when we get lost in that list of behaviors it's easy for us to forget that there's a God who loves us. The thing that is so amazing about this psalm for me is that at the beginning, Asaph is talking about how all these people who are doing all these evil things are, are prospering. But at the end, he realized that what it means to prosper is something very different. 
He realizes that, that what the rest of the world tells us is about prosperous uh, uh, things or things that are of value, he finds really aren't really of value. At the end of this book, he says, but when the day is done, I know that there's a God who loves me. That when the day is done, there's, there's a God who protects me. And even when we do those things that we think give us lots of, of power and prestige, really they're empty in light of what God can give us in terms of a changed heart and a transformed soul and a world that can be different because the Spirit of God works in us. And so as I sat around that table with this young man and as we were talking about what it was to be a, a person of faith and what it was to be part of this church, I could see that as we talked, his idea of those lists and those check marks began to melt away. And he started to think about what it meant to be a follower of a God that loves us. And that there's joy and there's hope in that. And sometimes the things that we strive for turn out to be very empty, but when there's a God who loves us and a God who cares about us and a God who can transform our hearts, there's joy and there's prosperity in that. And sometimes the world doesn't recognize that. There's an image that I, that I often think of. I went to college down in Ashland, Oregon, and the uh, uh, Interstate 5 runs right from Medford through Ashland. And Interstate 5 is an incredibly well-trafficked roadway. And because there are so many cars on that roadway, there is tons of garbage in the median strip of I-5. If you drive down I-5, there's always McDonald's cups and napkins and newspapers and all kinds of stuff piled in the middle of the road. But as you come through, uh, start to head up the hill towards Ashton, Oregon, every spring there are wild daffodils that grow in that median strip. And it's, so uh, that's, you guys know what a daffodil is, right? That's a daffodil, it's those yellow flowers. They come back every year. And in that median strip, in the midst of all this garbage, you'll see this little flower start to poke up through the garbage. I can remember driving to class one time, and as I was driving down the highway looking over, there was a big old 7-Eleven Big Gulp cup. And growing out of the middle of that Big Gulp cup was a daffodil, just peeking over the edge. And I remember looking at that and thinking, that's kind of what the kingdom of God is like. In the midst of all the garbage, in the midst of all the things that seem empty and useless to us, there's something about God's spirit that allows us to bloom and the prosper in the midst of all that garbage. And so I want to leave you this morning with this image of the daffodil, that in the times when you feel like everything is garbage around us, and why do we even try anymore, I want you to have this picture of God's spirit working in you, and being that flower that pokes out through the garbage, and allows us to say, even in the midst of difficult times, the kingdom of God is real and alive in us, and we have an opportunity to follow this God of love. Amen? What did you think about that? I thought Mark did a great job. I love the daffodil. Right? Would y'all stand with us? So uh, you heard this song last night, so I hope it's a little more familiar to you. I want you to try to sing along with us. If it was new, or if you know it, sing out as loud as you can. My purpose 
always remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fame my heart and my soul i'll give you control consume me from the inside out let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out everlasting your light will shine when all earth fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fame and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out lord my soul cries out everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all things and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out lord my soul cries out from the inside out lord my soul cries out to you lord there are times where we question and we wonder why are we here what are we doing how do we make sense of this and we thank you for being there in that time with us giving us that space to do that but knowing also that you're right there alongside us and that beauty grows out of those times of questioning and doubt amen you guys ready to get rocking i want to see you move Through you the blind will see, through you the mute will sing, through you the dead will rise, through you all hearts will praise, through you the darkness flees, through you my heart screams I am free. Let's sing that again. Through you the dawn will see, through you the mute will sing, through you the dead will rise, through you our hearts will praise, through you the darkness flees, through you my heart screams, I am free, yes I am free, and I am free. Yes, I am free. 
really fast, so we do have some extra t-shirts. So what we're going to do is kind of like a raffle thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your names in a basket over there in between lunch and workshop one over at the registration table. So after lunch, before workshop. And there are four smalls, two mediums, four large, and one extra large shirt. So you'll put your name in a basket and we'll draw the names to see who gets the extra shirt. $20. Yes. All right, so now we're going to dismiss to small groups. Let's do number, small group number 12. Small group number 14. Small group number two. Small group number 13. Small group number 11. Nine. There you go. Five. Oh, five's with me. That's right. So uh, just meet right there. Um, four. Six. Small group number seven. Did I already call that? No. Seven? Okay, seven. Um, eight? And then whatever's left can go. <laughs> <laughs> 